that is the county government of Nairobi made a decision to relocate traders from CBD and the deputy president recklessly and without regard to the high office that he holds went to incite people to obey lawful decisions of the county government of Nairobi hence undermining devolution. Mr. Speaker, we invite members to find that the Deputy President did breach and violate the Constitution in terms of undermining devolution and in terms of interfering with the running of the city county of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, allow me now to move to ground number four. Ground number four is about intimidation and vilification of judges, which is contrary to Article 160 of the Constitution. Article 160 of the Constitution speaks to the independence of the judiciary. Mr. Speaker, at, in our bundle of documents, at page 145 to 163, we have attached the decision of Lady Justice Esther Minor, where the Lady Justice Esther Minor found that 200 million shillings assets of His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa were proceeds of crime and directed that the same be forfeited to the state. In, ex in, in, in intimidating the judge, the deputy president, in a public statement, accused the judge of corruption and did state that he will file a petition for the removal of the judge solely, solely because the judge found him culpable of crime, of, 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 of economic crimes. Mr. Speaker, you see, in terms of rule of law, parliament makes laws. The judiciary interprets those laws and makes decisions. Members of parliament must ask themselves what kind of a country we shall have if, if a, 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 a judge makes a decision that does not favor me, then I, I, I will resort to personal vendetta against that particular judge. Mr. Speaker, I will be playing shortly a clip where the Deputy President did threaten to occasion the removal of Justice Esther Minor on ground of our finding that she, he was culpable of money laundering. I request the media team to play the clip in evidence. We're now filing a petition to push. Now we begin the bulletin with the war on the judiciary, where Kenya Kwanzaa administration is making good on its threat. With the Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa now filing a petition to push for the removal of a judge from office. Gashagwa says he will on Thursday file a petition with the Judicial Service Commission to push for the removal of Justice Esther Minor, who handled an economic crimes case against him in 2022 for alleged corruption and misconduct. Now speaking in Iten, where he accompanied President William Ruto for a church service, Gashagwa told the Chief Justice to first clean up her house by dealing with pending cases with the Judicial Service Commission. Now in the sustained onslaught against the judiciary, President William Ruto vowed to deal with unnamed government officers he described as incompetent saying his administration will slay the corruption monster that has reared its ugly head in various arms of government. Chamitai Goin reports. After Chief Justice Martha Kome invited Kenyans with complaints over the conduct of judicial officers to submit their lamentations to her office, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, through Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, has taken the challenge, with the DUP announcing that he will file a petition this week. And the challenge is easy to toy with Shahidi. I will lead by example. On Thursday, this coming week, at 2.15, I will personally present a petition before Lady Chief Justice Mother Kome. A 
against Justice Esther Maina for her removal from the judiciary for misconduct and corruption. Because Gashagori leaving his July 2022 incident where 202 million shillings was seized to the state after Justice Esther Minor ruled the money was proceeds of corruption having been acquired through dubious means. Who your judge through corruption declared my hard and worth wealth proceeds of crime without giving me an opportunity to be hard. Again, is the rules of evidence where he who alleges must prove. We made an application to cross-examine the investigator Akakata. Kwasababu anajua, there is no case. Na evidence tuko na yo vile rifanyika. The Kenya Kwanza Battalion. Mr. Speaker, I'll request that we pause the video in the interest of time. In the interest of time, we pause the video. From the utterances, Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the attack on the judge is based on the decision the judge made in performing a constitutional mandate as a judge. It is clear that this is personal vendetta. It is clear that the deputy president was threatening the judge. It is clear that this is intimidation and an attack on the independence of the judiciary. Mr. Speaker, the deputy president is a president in waiting. And if he cannot, he's a president in waiting. And if he cannot protect and uphold the independence of the judiciary, that becomes a dangerous man. And he must be impeached for that particular reason. Mr. Speaker, I will therefore be requesting members of this House to find that this allegation has been proved to the required standard and approve the impeachment of Rigathi Gashagwa from the office of Deputy President. On ground number five, we have alleged that the pre Deputy President has breached Article 3.1 of the Constitution, Article 148.5 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Article 3.1 of the Constitution is about adherence to the Constitution. It states, for avoidance of doubt, as follows, that every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend this Constitution. Article 148.5 is about the oath of allegiance that the Deputy President took on assumption of office. And in that oath, the Deputy President did take oath and swore to protect and uphold the Constitution. I have demonstrated in all the particular incidences above that he has not lived up to the calling in the oath of office. And therefore, I'm calling this House to find that the, president, the Deputy President has not been upheld in the Constitution and has run a verse to his oath of office in terms of his conduct as highlighted above in the allegations that I have already proven. And for that reason, Mr. Speaker, to find that ground number five is also proven. Quickly, running to ground number six. And there is enough evidence, Mr. Speaker, to prove that particular ground. Ground number six is breach of the National Cohesion and Integration Act, particularly section 13, 1 and 62 of the National Integration and Cohesion Act. Mr. Speaker, the two provisions read as follows. Section 13 reads as follows. It is an offense for any person to use threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior where the person intends to stir feelings of ethnic contempt, hostility, violence, or discrimination. Section 62 on the other side provides as follows that a person commits an offense when the person makes statements that are intended or are likely to stir up feelings of ethnic contempt, hatred, hostility, violence, or discrimination. Mr. Speaker, in proving ground number one in terms of violation of the Constitution on national unity, 
I did provide evidence that the Deputy President has been using the shareholder language, has been terming the Kenya government as a company. And as much as those words offend the Constitution, similarly, they offend the National Cohesion and Integration Act 